Sandy, and I have lived with a mental illness for almost half of my life. Today, I will be sharing a story, a story I almost ended too soon. If you were to tell me a couple years ago that I would still be here telling my story, I wouldn't have believed you. I was in a really dark place throughout middle and high school. My depression began slowly, and then it seemed to hit me all at once. It started with me feeling exhausted all the time. I suddenly had trouble getting out of bed. I felt so many negative emotions that I couldn't explain. I had no idea why this was happening. <clears throat> and it made me feel even more alone because mental health and mental illness was something my family never talked about. I had only heard about depression through those Prozac commercials on TV and I barely knew anything about it. <clears throat> Sorry. My grades started dropping and my parents began to notice. Instead of asking me what was going on, they said I needed to do better and to stop being so lazy. I felt like all that mattered to my parents was how well I was doing in school. I felt like I had no one to turn to. I began to self-harm in the eighth grade and I remember wearing long sleeves when it would be 80 degrees outside just so I could cover up my arms. I bottled up all my emotions because I didn't want anyone to know how I felt. In the ninth grade, I attempted suicide for the first time. My parents came home and found me on the bathroom floor. When I told them what I had done, they responded with anger and disbelief. How could you do this to us? Do you have any idea what kind of shame this could bring our family? The hurtful questions played over and over in my head. It seemed like my life didn't matter to them and that they cared more about saving face. They refused to take me to the hospital at first. I spent the next eight hours that night throwing up and losing consciousness. When they saw that I wasn't getting any better, they took me to the emergency room. I stayed overnight and then I voluntarily admitted myself into the psychiatric ward. At this point, I still knew little to nothing about what depression really was. I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought that I was the only one in the world who felt this way. Being in the psychiatric ward was an eye-opening experience for me because I met other people in there who were going through similar times. I left a week later only to return again in a few months. My parents still had trouble grasping the fact that I had a mental illness. I remember in, family therapy meet, in the, my family therapy meeting, my dad said I self-harmed for attention. I was so angry at my parents for not understanding why I did the things I did. I was angry at them for not seeing how much pain I was in. I began to isolate myself from my parents and the re relationship gradually grew worse. <clears throat> I turned to drugs and alcohol to escape, and I began to receive truancy letters from school because there were so many days where I couldn't get out of bed. My last hospitalization happened when I was in my junior year. I was being bullied really badly, my relationship with my family was horrible, and I felt like I had no one I could truly turn to. I told one person what I had done, and if he hadn't showed up to my house when he did and told my parents, I would not be here today. They rushed me to the hospital, and I was barely conscious. The doctors ran some tests and asked me some questions. The next day, I was transferred to a hospital that is regarded as one of the best in the nation for liver transplants. The doctors told me I had caused significant damage to my liver and that they had put my name on the transplant list. Luckily, my liver healed on its own as I spent the next week in the ICU. I had never felt so weak in my life. I needed help getting up, go, getting up and going to the bathroom. I slept for most of the time and I was on suicide watch 24 seven. I felt like the biggest disappointment. However, this was a turning point in both me and my parents' life. They genuinely apologized to me and expressed so much regret in how they treated me. From that point on, they became more mindful of what they said and how they reacted whenever I was having a depressive episode. They joined support groups for parents who have a child living with a mental illness. So they took the time to educate themselves on mental health itself and how a mental illness can severely impact those who live with it. It took a lot for me to forgive my parents, but it took even more for me to accept that I have a mental illness. I used to think of it as a shameful secret that I could never share with anyone. Now I am passionate about advocating for mental health and the destigmatization of mental illnesses. One of my biggest takeaways from my experience is to always give yourself time. If I had given myself a couple minutes to breathe and really calm down and think about what I was doing, I would not have gone through with my attempts. Each time I attempted, I remember there was instantaneous regret of wishing I didn't do what I did. So please, if you ever find yourself in that situation where you think you want to end your life, please give yourself time. The feeling will pass. When we say we want to end our life, we don't think about the good things we are ending. We only think about the bad things that we want to end. I promise you that one day you will look back and be grateful that you're still here. Thank you.